In my last year at CNFX, I didn't have the same kind of motivation or excitement towards the game. The time I was most excited and motivated in basketball was in high school. I had a clear goal I wanted to achieve, so I was willing to grind in order to get there. My last year, it's not something I wanted to pursue professionally. I didn't put forth the same love and the same work ethic to basketball as I had in years previous. What's going on everyone? I just finished a little workout outside. I ran five individual kilometers with a one, one to one and a half work rest ratio. Shout out my guy top the food chain, put me on. It was actually a conversation I was having with him during my rest periods that I said, man, if you want something to boost your mood, I just don't see a better way to do that than running or working out. Like the runner's high that I have right now is unbelievable. My, my eventual goal and my goal that I've had during quarantine is to increase my 5K time. I think my best right now is like 20, 38. So I have a lot of work to do, but just talking to uh, talking to Will this morning, this is a good way to work on that, get the lung and I don't know, he's a kinesi he studied kinesiology, so he, he knows all the terms, but it makes sense to me. And I know that today's workout that I just finished feels phenomenal. Another thing I wanted to add was I was talking to someone last night and uh, there's a lot that goes on in my head during runs, um, a lot of ideas. And one thing that I'm trying to get better at is when I have an idea, I want to act on it. And uh, I get all kinds of like different creative ideas or I don't know, just just ideas that I have, things I'm thinking about throughout the day. And especially when I'm running, it's not a way for me to distract myself, but it just I think it just happens naturally where I just have many thoughts. So. I'm gonna start doing more of these where I can record the thoughts that I have during my runs. What's going on everyone? Thank you so much for coming to another episode of Undress the Stories. For those of you who may be new here, my name is Tristan Ross and I run the Instagram account called Undress the Jersey, which is a platform for athletes to share their stories. But in particular, in this series, I take those stories that are on the Instagram page and give my two, my two cents on them. So today's an exciting episode for me because the three stories that I'll be reading, I find that I relate well to them, or especially with the perspective that I have right now. I think you're really gonna enjoy this one. What I would like to see happen down the road is when I give my thoughts on the stories, if you guys leave me a comment of your thoughts on the same stories, it's gonna create more of a conversation piece to this series. So let's get into it. So the first story uh, today is from Katie Ross. No, we're not related, uh, but Katie was a soccer player and basketball player for Acadia University here in Nova Scotia. It's funny, you would think having the opportunity to play both provincial soccer and basketball growing up and being able to play both sports at the varsity level, I would have at least one success story. One time I came out on top, one time I got to hold a banner, but again in my final year at Acadia, I lost the championship game for both sports. My roommates, who double as teammates, and I joke, often joke about how we still get choked up about thinking about hearing the final whistles and realizing that it's all over. But as bad as it still hurts, I wouldn't change the program I've been a part of, the friendships I've made, or the memories I've shared with my families for anything. And as I see the clock ticking down on my time as a varsity athlete, I am so happy and thankful for the opportunities I've had, but I also have accepted that it is time to move on and I'm looking forward to what's next. So a few things from this story sticks out to me. For one, let's not neglect the fact that playing two varsity sports um, in university is just another level of time management and dedication, hard work, because I think a lot of athletes use the off season as a time to decompress, mentally disconnect from, from the season and to get ready for the next one, where if you're playing two sports, you end one and boom, you're jumping right into the next. So that, that just shows the character that uh, Katie has. The second thing I wanna bring up that I relate to as well, I, I never won a championship during my time uh, in high school or university. And it's something that me and my teammates from St. of X still talk about because the basketball program at St. of X has a, has a culture where we're still all connected in some way. And in, in the times that we do come together, a lot of the conversation has to do with the teams that won championships. And to win a championship with your, with your teammates, it's something you'll never ever forget. So I'm not saying I'm, I'm gonna forget my time as a St. of X athlete, but winning a championship is just something that ingrains you in program history, something that we were this close to. If you know, you know. 
The last thing that stuck out to me here was Katie talking about how she still gets choked up about uh, hearing the final buzzer and realizing that your sports career is over. I had this exact same feeling in my last game. Uh, it was the playoffs, first round, we lost. But as I knew the game was ending, I was sitting on the bench and it, it, was, it was this moment of silence. It was this moment of all of the memories and emotions and relationships and the people that have supported just flooded me all at once. I wasn't necessarily upset about losing the game and you know not winning a championship that year. It was more for me having this moment that realizing my time as a basketball player is over. For an athlete that's, that's played a sport their entire life, that's a feeling that doesn't really get recreated in other ways so uh, I know I know what Katie was feeling and it's it was it was a joyous feeling like I was more thankful for everything because I had all these happy memories it was an emotional period of time that felt like everything was rushing back towards me so thanks for sharing Katie let's get on to the next one okay this one's from Maya Reynolds who is a track athlete for Dalhousie University growing up I participated in a variety of sports recreationally and competitively including dance, soccer, basketball, karate, volleyball, and gymnastics. Track and field was only six weeks of the year in school, but I loved it and naturally did pretty well in it. In grade 11, my family moved and I began training with a track coach outside of school. Although I had done well in school track, suddenly competing against runners who had been training hardcore was a wake-up call. I could no longer rely on natural talent. The past three years have taught me so much about focus, goal setting, and working hard for what you want. I am constantly humbled by those I train with and compete against. I feel so lucky for every opportunity I've received from track, but also what I've accomplished so far is just the beginning. I'm excited to see where my coaches at Dow will take me and how the next three to four years will pan out. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, something in quarantine that I've been focused on is running 5Ks. And the competitive side of me is consistently trying to run a faster 5K. And I know exactly what Maya's thinking because I'm at this point where my 5K isn't budging. And as someone who's always considered themselves in shape, athletic, I never realized how much goes into running and that there's a skill and technique, hard work that goes behind competitive running. My 5K is my best right now is only 2038. And I've had this goal for well over a month now to get it below 20 minutes. And I just, I'm struggling. And then when I do a little bit of research and I see what's a fast 5K and what are my friends running, I, I'm realizing that I can no longer rely on this natural talent that I thought I had. And it actually takes a certain amount of training and focus and strategy that goes behind running faster for a long period of time. So uh, it's something that I, that's been keeping me busy. Clearly Maya, who competes competitively in this sport, you know, she had some success in high school, but then when she when she hit university, it's a whole nother level. I think a lot of athletes experience that, especially going from high school, having success, being the best player on your team, and then you hit the university level where you're competing against people who have four to five years on on top of you, everything from the physicality and skill aspect, four to five years of intricate and planned training, it's gonna make a big difference. So my piece of advice for anyone who's making that transition from high school to university is understand this and acknowledge that you're not gonna have the same success that you did in your grade 12 year going into university because you're entering this whole new environment where you're gonna have to start from the bottom again and, and, and climb to the top. So take that with a grain of salt and just understand that it's gonna take a lot of hard work. Go from there. So thanks for sharing Maya, let's get into the last one. Okay, so this next story is from Eric Law. Eric was the captain of the hockey team at St. Evex. And not only was he a, a successful hockey player, Eric was known for his achievements in the classroom. One of the years that I was there, I'm pretty sure that he won the Governor's Award, uh, which has to do with grade point average and being a student athlete. Like He had one of the highest grade point averages at St. of X, so a brilliant person. And after he finished that X, he went on to Ottawa University to med school. So this guy's got it figured out. Although my passion was hockey, growing up, I played a variety of sports. I believe playing different sports gave me experiences and skills that I have since used to excel in hockey. Plus, I was always excited for the hockey season to begin, keeping me extra motivated. Hockey has been a huge part of my life's successes. Being drafted by the Buffalo Sabres, representing Canada at the U18 World Tournament, and winning back-to-back -back AUS titles with St. Evex. But hockey has also challenged me and made me a stronger human being, 
rehabbing injuries, battling through adversity, and making the best of the student athlete experience. Love the game and it will love you back. So I wanna focus on that last sentence. Love the game and it will love you back. I think that's something that relates to all aspects in life, not just sports. If what you're doing doesn't excite you, if you're not happy doing what you're doing, you're not gonna go through the tough times that come along with the successes. I think for me, I definitely relate to this. In my last year at St. of X playing for the basketball team, I didn't have the same kind of motivation or drive or excitement towards the game. The time I was most excited and invested and motivated in basketball was in high school because I had a clear goal and a clear vision that I wanted to achieve. And so I was willing to put in the hours and the time and the just the, the quote unquote grind in order to get there. I think the transition into university is and especially in my last year, I didn't I didn't see myself as a basketball player for when I graduated St. of X. I didn't see a vision that had basketball in it. I didn't see myself as a basketball player. It's not something I wanted to pursue professionally after. And so I think with that, because I didn't have a clear vision, I didn't put forth the, the same love and the same drive and the same work ethic to basketball as I had in years previous. I think this is just a, a larger than life lesson. You have to find what you want to do and what makes you happy, because if you don't, you're not gonna put in the necessary time that it requires to gain something valuable from it. So that's a huge quote. And clearly, you know, just touching on Eric's success in the classroom, it's clear that he had a vision and purpose for doing such uh, for later on in life, which you can now see that he's studying medicine. So good on Eric and uh, thank you so much for sharing that lesson. All right, that wraps up another episode of Undress the Stories. Thank you so much for making it this far. Like I said before, I'm really enjoying these processes because it's just like reading a book or listening to a song or watching a movie over and over and over again. For me to go back to these stories that I've already featured, it's allowing me to pull a new perspective or a new lesson uh, from it. So really hope you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment below with your thoughts from each of those stories uh, let's create a little bit of conversation here i'll definitely reply to all of them and thumbs up button really really helps me out so until next time that's episode three of undressed stories tristan's out